Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to be here with you today. My name is Gilbert Tuhabonye, a Tutsi, a genocide survivor from Burundi, a small country south of Rwanda. So many people in the world know about Rwanda, but a few realize that ethnic conflict leading to the violence of the both countries ignited in Burundi 1993. I have lived through to bear the witness today. I thought October the 21st, it was a normal day school, but it wasn't. At the Kibimba school where I was a student, we did not know that the president a Hutu had been assassinated by the Tutsis extremist. But the Hutu knew in an act of retaliation, they carefully allowed in us to be killed. We were led away from the school, roped together in a death march, beaten, hacked with machetes and paralyzed blows to the back of our neck. The Hutu wanted to make sure that we would not escape. Those of us who were still breathing were forced into the burning building to be burned alive. There seemed to be a plan in place, and we, the Tutsi, were the target. You must understand that the conflict between the Hutus had a, has a deep root in the Burundi. The country is made of 85% of Hutu, 14% of Tutsis, and then 1% of Pygmies. While the Hutu make up the majority, the Tutsi have hold the power position and influence. For decades now, the two tribes have battled for power, and over the years have developed the pattern of threats and the retaliation for elections. This has continued occurring in Burundi, as well as in Rwanda, and in the two mass killings in 1972 and 1994 and 93. In 1993, the face of evil became my very own, my fellow student, who at the moment I believe to be my friends. We had lived together in our village and studied at a school together in peace. Now they were part of the plot that want to kill us, and want to kill every Tutsi they could find by machete or fire. The turn of the event that day was shocking to me. Growing up, I never learned how to hate. Hate pushes love from your heart. That day, I was staring at hate all around me. After eight hours in burning building, it had now become a dead chamber, yet somehow I was still alive. As I listened and watched my friend dying around me, I struggled to understand. I thought about taking my own life, but in a confusion, a holy voice kept telling me I would be okay. I thought about hiding and other people. But I knew I had to escape because the Hutu could not afford to let anyone come out alive. And I could not let this horrible act be buried in the house of building burning. As the Hutu outside chanted, drunk, celebrated the massacre and the power and the perceived power, I used, I didn't have a choice. I used the fumer from the leg of a mortal's classmate to break the window and run free. Defying logics and the pain of my still burning, I ran my enemies and I escaped into the night. How could this be possible? My enemy did everything they could to lock me into the building and kill me. I still wonder and our goodness of God and the safety that the Holy Spirit provided me that night, God gave me the courage and the will to live. 
Even though throughout my career, when my doctor said I would never run again, I did not give up. It is because of faith, forgiveness, that I was able to go on with my life. You cannot live a fully life if your heart is heavy with hate and anger. And though it was very hard, I chose to forgive. Forgiveness allowed me to move forward and open my heart to countless blessings and opportunities. Eventually, I did return to running, the sports that I love. And you see, running is my therapy. It grounds me, and it takes me to places. It connects me to God. It is the vehicle through which all the blessings have come my way. Running saved my life on October. God gave me the gift so that I could be here today and be doing healing work with others. Running eventually led me to America on a full scholarship at Abilene Christian University and it led me to the life I enjoy today. I am a coach, an author, a philanthropist, a husband, and the father of two beautiful girls, Grace and Emma. I never thought that one day I would have a chance to write a book and share the story with, this, with the rest of the world. People I knew had encouraged me to write a book, but I wanted, to, I wanted people to read a book and realize that in spite of the, all I went through, I survived. Through perseverance and forgiveness, you can, you can accomplish anything and fulfill your dreams. You must rely on faith. You must have hope. I feel like each opportunity opened the door to yet another adventure. My career as a running coach led me to incredible people who I have touched my life. I am very humbled by the runner and friends in Texas who helped me create the charity, the Gazelle Foundation, in which it focuses on improving the life of the people of Burundi, regardless of the tribal affiliation. Our current efforts are geared to the basic of need, water, clean water. When I was growing up in Burundi, before school every day, the women and the children had to work several miles to get water. Most often, it was very dirty and contaminated that had to be boiled for safety to use for drinking, bathing, and cooking. It was a very hard way to live, but it still is today. Access to clean water, it is the most, the biggest problem in Africa. That is why I am so proud of the first project the Gazelle Foundation completed last fall, a water collection that will be serving 2,000 people. Hutu and Tutsis alike can get clean water close to home. This water not only brings the people together to share common resources, it helps improve the community in every way. And children no longer have to spend each hour fetching water and now have a great opportunity to go to school and become better educated. Families and the farmers have a chance to harvest their crops all year long versus the seasonary, which helped to stop hunger. This was a change forever for the community. I am so grateful for the opportunity to be with you and to be in this panel with such amazing people. People who have lived through to tell stories. Today, when the world is filled with so much violence and despair, we have to remind ourselves not to give up on hope. There is a reason that I'm alive, a reason that we all survived. It is how we use the gift to, given to us, and that is most critical to changing hate in the world. How do we bring peace, harmony, and change? In Burundi today, 
The situation, it is better, but it is no by means over. Now the killings, more targeting of the key individuals. People still do not feel safe to travel. They do not live freely. Human rights continue to be challenged. There is a greater corruption. People are jailed without a cause, and the fear surrounds the people. The upcoming election in June of this year has many worried. We need the international community to keep a close eye on Burundi because another civil war will occur. We need to continue to speak against our genocide in all, in all parts of to the world to educate the people so they learn a better way to be dealing with conflicts. We need to hold the corrupts and the criminal accountable for their own actions. We cannot allow these people who have committed crimes to be in power. We must prevent mass killings of human beings. We must be the voice of forgiveness and tolerance. In 1993, I lost so many classmates, friends, to, to such unspoken violence. Let us, the witness, the survivor, be the example of peace. Thank you.